Hello, could anybody give me a hand? Whoops, you work too hard. Why not just grab a VTDSO and put it in your pocket, instead? Verdun's Technology Second Generation Digital Storage Oscilloscopes. The most portable, high precision, PC based all in one test and measurement solutions. Powered by multi instrument. A powerful multi function virtual instrument software. The second generation VTDSOs feature Verdun's technology's unique hardware based DSP algorithm which enhances the performance and functionality dramatically without adding extra hardware cost. When used in conjunction with multi-instrument software, these VTDSOs convert any desktop, laptop, or tablet PC into a powerful oscilloscope, spectrum analyzer, signal generator, data logger, multimeter, and so forth, all of which work simultaneously. Compared with the first-generation VTDSOs and those USB DSOs from other manufacturers, this new generation has the following major advantages. Unique Feature 1 Hardware DSP-based bit resolution enhancement for oscilloscope The first-generation VTDSOs and those USB DSOs from other manufacturers generally have a fixed bit resolution, which does not change with the sampling rate. Fixed 8-bit oscilloscopes are still dominating the market. This probably explains why oscilloscopes are still not considered as accurate tools for voltage measurement, although they are indispensable tools for waveform viewing. While a bit resolution of 8 is generally sufficient for many high-frequency applications, such as electronic tests, low-frequency applications, such as audio and vibration analysis, usually require a bit resolution higher than 8. However, oscilloscopes with a fixed bit resolution higher than 8 are very expensive, especially when the sampling rate is high. This is where the second generation of VTDSOs come into play. They are able to provide variable bit resolution without adding extra cost. As the sampling rate goes down, the bit resolution goes up. Here we take VTDSO2820 as an example. The bit resolution increases from 8 to 16 as the sampling rate goes down from 200 MHz to 1 kHz. The increased bit resolution would have simply increased a few bits of noise, if the noise level of the DSO had not been carefully taken care of. This figure shows the variation of the noise level with the sampling rate. For a fixed 8-bit oscilloscope, the noise level is more or less fixed and does not change with the sampling rate. For a second generation VTDSO, again, we take VTDSO2820 as an example. Under its bit enhancement mode, as the sampling rate goes down, the noise level goes down substantially, from minus 55 dBFS at 200 MHz to minus 88 dBFS at 1 kHz. Therefore, in a second generation VTDSOs, the increase in bit resolution is accompanied by a decrease in noise level resulting in an increase in dynamic range and measurement accuracy. Please note that, in the second generation VTDSOs, the bit resolution enhancement is implemented through hardware DSP at no cost to any aspect of the signal quality. This is superior to the software DSP-based bit resolution enhancement feature provided by some other oscilloscopes in the market, where the bandwidth of the signal is greatly reduced. Unique Feature 2 Streaming mode in oscilloscope Normal frame mode is supported by all oscilloscopes in the market. Each frame of data will be triggered and then stored in the DSO memory first before it is transferred to the supervisory computer. The maximum record length is thus limited by the memory size of the DSO hardware. Beside the normal frame mode, the second generation VTDSO supports streaming mode as well. Streaming mode uses the huge storage space available in the computer, either on hard disk or in memory, to record data continuously upon the initial trigger. This breaks through the record length limitation imposed by the DSO's memory size, and thus greatly extends the maximum record length. In multi-instrument, there are two streaming modes. Record mode and roll mode. Record mode uses the computer's hard disk to persist the continuously sampled data, while roll mode uses the computer's memory for temporary concatenation of them. 
the maximum sampling rate sustainable in record mode for the second generation VT DSOs is about 10 MHz. Roll mode is usually used when the sampling rate is low and the oscilloscope sweep time is greater than a few seconds, in order to provide a faster screen response and avoid the long waiting time. Here is an example of recording a 100 kHz sine wave at 10 MHz and 8-bit under record mode. The progress bar at the lower left corner of the oscilloscope window shows the recording progress. A green bar without any red chunk would mean that the data recorded is continuous without any discontinuity in between. We have recorded for about 120 seconds, which means that more than 1.2 GB of data have been recorded. Imaging how expensive it would be for an oscilloscope with gigabytes memory depth. Now, we can zoom in and check if the waveform we have recorded is continuous, just to further confirm. As you can see the waveform is perfectly continuous. Here is an example of roll mode. The ECG signal is being sampled at 10 kHz. Under normal frame mode, it is difficult to see the full picture of the ECG signal and the screen update is slow. Now, we set it to roll mode and change the oscilloscope sweep time from 1 second to 10 seconds. Therefore, in total, 100,000 samples will be displayed in one oscilloscope frame. Under roll mode, the screen will not wait for 10 seconds to get updated. In fact, it is getting partially updated every 100 milliseconds. The newly sampled data are being fed continuously from the right of the oscilloscope window. No discontinuity is observed, thanks to the streaming mode supported in the second generation VT DSOs. Unique Feature 3 Oscilloscope Digital Trigger and Trigger Frequency Rejection While many DSOs in the market are still using analog trigger, the second generation VT DSOs use digital trigger. Digital trigger has much better level and timing accuracy than analog trigger. Its trigger level accuracy is one count of the ADC bit resolution, and trigger timing accuracy is equal to the sampling interval. Trigger frequency rejection, a function generally not found in other oscilloscopes, can be used to filter out noises from the trigger signal to prevent false triggering and stabilize waveform display. The second generation VT DSOs provide one level of high frequency rejection, five levels of noise rejection, 5 levels of high frequency plus noise rejection, and 1 level of user defined high frequency plus noise rejection. These trigger frequency rejection options ensure stable triggering under all conditions. Here is an example of using trigger frequency rejection function. The trigger frequency rejection is not used and the waveform display is not stable. Now, we change it to high frequency rejection, no improvement. Then noise rejection level 0, improved a bit. Noise rejection level 1, stable now. Unique feature 4. Oscilloscope persistence mode. This mode allows hundreds of consecutive waveforms to be superimposed in the oscilloscope window in three ways. Phosphorescent. Rainbow. Equivalent time sampling. The former two are useful to capture intermittent and unstable events hidden in a series of repeated normal events, while the latter one can be used to increase the displayed samples per cycle, when the real-time samples per cycle is insufficient to render the actual waveform properly, provided that the signal itself is repetitive. Here we generate a frequency sweep signal from the signal generator of a VTDSO2810. Let's put the trigger delay to minus 50%. Right click anywhere inside the oscilloscope and open its properties window. Select the chart options tab, and choose phosphorescent. Now the oscilloscope is in the phosphorescent display mode. We can also change it to rainbow mode. Now, let's do amplitude sweep instead.
Now we demonstrate the equivalent time sampling function. The input signal is a sine wave at 25 MHz. The sampling rate of the oscilloscope is 100 MHz, therefore only 4 samples per cycle. The waveform displayed is like this. Now we change it to equivalent time sampling mode. As you can see, the waveform looks better. Unique Feature 5 External Trigger Input Channel as a Digital Input Channel It is surprising to note that none of other oscilloscopes have made fully use of this input channel, apart from its external trigger function. The external trigger input channel of a second generation VTDSOs can be used as a digital input channel. It is actually a 1-bit ADC, with a threshold for digitization adjustable. With two analog input channels and one digital input channel, the oscilloscope can be used for mixed signal measurements. Another usage example is motor vibration analysis, where you can use the two analog input channels for noise and acceleration inputs, respectively, and the external trigger channel for tachometer input. Unique Feature 6 Anti-aliasing filter for spectrum analyzer The USB DSOs in the market are generally equipped with only one fixed anti-aliasing filter for the highest sampling rate. Aliasing will still occur when the sampling rate goes down. This will cause wrong measurements in both the oscilloscope and the spectrum analyzer, according to Nequitas Shannon sampling theorem. The second generation VTDSOs solve this problem using anti-aliasing filters, that can adapt to the sampling rate. As the sampling rate goes down, the cut-off frequency of the anti-aliasing filter goes down as well to ensure reliable measurements. Unique Feature 7 Streaming Mode in Signal Generator The second generation VTDSOs support two signal generator modes. DDS mode Streaming mode DDS mode is supported by almost all digital signal generators in the market. One limitation of DDS is that the generated signal has to be replicated from the waveform stored in the DDS buffer, although its frequency can be varied. In other word, the waveform, although it can be arbitrary in shape, is fixed once the generator starts. Unlike other signal generators in the market, the second generation VTDSO supports streaming mode in its signal generator as well. This is in addition to DDS mode. While consuming more CPU time, streaming mode provides more functionality than DDS mode. Basically, it can generate absolutely arbitrary signals. Whatever can be synthesized or recorded by the computer can be streamed out to the signal generator for output. The signal does not have to contain repetitive waveforms at all. The maximum sampling rate sustainable in streaming mode in the signal generator can be up to 10 MHz. Here is an example of recording and replaying a composite PAL video signal using VTDS-0280E. First we recorded the PAL composite video signal from a DVD player at 10 MHz using the streaming mode of the oscilloscope. The recorded data is saved in a WAV file. We can zoom in to see the details of the recorded data. Then we replay the wave file at 10 MHz through the signal generator of the same DSO. Unique Feature 8 Signal Generator, DDS Interpolation The signal generator of a second generation VTDSO supports DDS interpolation, which, in effect, increases the DDS buffer in the hardware by a factor of 65,536. A DDS-DAC device uses a lookup table to hold the shape of the signal to be generated. 
the DDS output suffers from the limited number of entries in the lookup table. The output value jumps when going from one entry to the next, introducing unwanted high frequencies in the output signal. This adverse effect may not be discernible when the output signal frequency is high, but becomes sensible as the output signal frequency goes down. DDS interpolation can be used to fix or alleviate this problem. Here we generate a sync wave at 10 Hz using VTDS 02810E. The generated signal is looped back to its oscilloscope's input. Then we start the oscilloscope. Adjust the trigger level to make the display stable. Zoom in to see the detailed waveform. The steps along the waveform can be clearly seen. This problem is caused by the limited DDS buffer size. Stop the oscilloscope and signal generator. Then go to setting, DAC devices, and select DDS interpolation. Start the signal generator and oscilloscope again, as you can see now, all steps are now smoothed out, and the waveform looks perfect. Unique Feature 9 Simultaneous Data Acquisition and Data Output The oscilloscope and signal generator of a second generation VTDSO can work simultaneously. You can generate a stimulus to the device under test, or DUT, and acquire the response from that device at the same time. You can even configure a sequence of steps to generate different stimuli to the device under test, and analyze the different responses from it. The stimuli can be frequency swept sign, amplitude swept sign, frequency step sign, amplitude step sign, white noise, pink noise, impulse, maximum length sequence, single frequency sign, or multitones, etc. The DUT characteristics that can be analyzed including amplitude frequency response, transfer function, impedance, distortion, signal to noise ratio, etc. Unique feature 10. Calibration and recalibration. All the second generation VTDSOs are individually calibrated to the specifications. This results in higher accuracy than their peers without additional cost. Some models allow the user to recalibrate them, using the built-in signal generator. These models are equipped with independent gain and offset adjustment hardware. As the adjustment is done before ADC, the dynamic range of the ADC is not affected. This is superior to the software gain and offset adjustment method used by many other oscilloscopes in the market, where the adjustment is done after ADC, and thus the dynamic range of the ADC is adversely affected. Unique Feature 11 Upgradable Software, Firmware, and Hardware-Based DSP Algorithm The firmware and hardware-based DSP algorithm inside the second-generation VTDSOs, as well as the multi-instrument PC software, are all remotely upgradable. If you have purchased a VTDSO, just visit our website at www.virtins.com frequently to see if an upgrade is available for download. Verdim's Technology Turn a PC into multiple virtual instruments.